What's up? To, it's Jay Midnight, and today I want to talk about the TikTok ban. Now, what's so crazy about this ban is we know it ain't about um, national security, really, to, to the way they make it sound. What it's really about is controlling information and who has access to information and who can disseminate information without the state being in control. Now, TikTok is a Chinese app, meaning it's controlled by the Chinese. Now, whether that's directly or indirectly, I'll, I'll just go with directly because we're in an era where military is involved with information. Now, why TikTok needs to be sold or banned by the before the 2024 election. This is an article by Time. So right there, they're basically telling you what this is really about. Remember last time we had presidential elections, Facebook was censoring content that they didn't, they felt was whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It was, but they were censoring one side. And that's what they did with the corona censored one side. And after these things happen, we find out that what was being censored is usually the truth. It's just not tr the truth at the time that they don't want it to be the truth. You know what I mean? So what we got going on is something that's more about controlling who the youth have access to. And you'll hear that later in the show. But I want to introduce Candace Owens on this because she broke it down good and put a good clip on her show that kind of breaks down some of the other interests involved that have nothing to do with real national security. What it's really about is when the establishment media and the White House, are what they're dealing with now is that they're putting out talking po points and propaganda and people don't believe it anymore because, first of all, they're always found to be lying. And then second of all, at least in the past, they would be found out to be lying 10 years later. But now, like as soon as they put out the propaganda, it's people that's doing the homework and then presenting the information. And then you're figuring out for yourself, damn, nigga, that, that was not what you said it was, Mr. Biden or Mr. Trump or whoever. So let's go to Candace. If TikTok is in fact banned, there is no question that Israel will be bl blamed, APAC will be blamed, the ADL will be blamed. Jews are going to be blamed for a social media app being removed. You can see that sentiment building. They're reading these articles. They're already making videos. And Gen Z is saying that the only reason this is on the table is because they don't like our perspectives about the Israel versus Hamas war. That is what they are saying. So what tends to happen is that if you prove them to be right, if they believe that this gets banned and they are looking and they are seeing that Jewish organizations are behind or at least supporting the ban, they're not the only people that believe that it should be banned, just to be clear, there will be no coming back. This will be seen as a punishment that is being issued to Gen Z for the sin of what they deem to be them becoming more educated. So... If your goal is to fight anti-Semitism by banning TikTok, my prediction is that what it's actually going to do is inspire more anti-Semitism and the Gen Zers are going to get crafty in the manners that they communicate. I don't think this is a good idea if the purpose is that you want to fight anti-Semitism. Don't believe me, here is one TikToker who is going viral explaining what's actually happening in terms of a TikTok ban. Take a listen. So they're pushing another TikTok ban bill really hard, but something does not add up about it at all. Bro, I've been trying to wrap my head around this for the last couple days and nothing was making sense until I stumbled upon this leaked recording. First off, what I'm about to get into is highly controversial. It's extremely sensitive, so I'm gonna have to be really careful about it. This leaked recording is from about four or five months ago. It's Jonathan Greenblatt. He is the head of the Anti-Defamation League. And so we really have a TikTok problem, a Gen Z problem, because again, like we've been chasing this left-right divide, it's the wrong game. The real game is the next generation that our community needs to put the same brains that gave us Tagli, the same brains that gave us all these other amazing innovations, need to put our energy toward this. 
clear as day. We have a generational problem. We have a TikTok problem. And we're going to need to put all our energy into this. And if there's any lobby that owns more U.S. politicians, it is this one. I can't really say it out loud, but this is the one. Democrats and Republicans alike fear this lobby's clout. We can count on well over half the House, 250 to 300 members, to do reflexively whatever they want. In 24 hours, we could have the signatures of 70 senators on this napkin. Literally playing out right before our very eyes. There's also this Time Magazine article that just came out. Why TikTok needs to be sold or banned before the 2024 election. The article barely even mentions China or election security. Almost the entirety of it focuses solely on this issue right here. Another chart from the article. And the ironic thing is that, yes, it's true, a foreign government has infiltrated the U.S., except it's just not the country they want you to think it is. All right, so there you have it. That is the current narrative on TikTok. And by the way, that is one of three reasons that I am against the TikTok ban. Because number one, it will, in fact, lead to more anti-Semitism. Because when you have someone who is not liked, by the way, by Democrats and Republicans, a lot of people have issues with Jonathan Greenblatt and the ADL, you have someone like Jonathan Greenblatt outwardly saying that, outwardly caught on audio, sounding like a cartoon villain, that's not going to be good. Whether it's right or wrong, what you're going to have is a scenario where Israel and quote unquote powerful Jews are going to be blamed if TikTok is banned. Please heed my warning on this. Like I said, that narrative is already building. Number two, the reason I'm against it is because I don't trust our government narratives, okay? That's just how I feel. People have a right to hear different perspectives and to decide on what they believe to be true or false. We don't need the government telling us what the right narrative is. Banning TikTok, what does it actually mean? Well, it means that we'll be giving Facebook more power, Instagram more power, and I think we all know and understand that Facebook is and always has been a CIA tool. And by the way, that's what I think it is. I think this is, comes down to the CIA. I think it's the never-ending wars CIA, the Pentagon, that wants to ban TikTok, not the Jews. I think the deep state panicked when that letter went viral. I think they said, oh my gosh, we just realized that TikTok could potentially impact our pre-approved war narratives. If they were able to get that letter of Osama bin Laden around, think, think what else they're gonna be able to get around. We don't control TikTok like we control Facebook and Instagram. By the way, I think that's a good thing. Deep state narratives being weakened is a good thing. Tucker Carlson going to Russia, that was a good thing. Does it mean that everything Vladimir Putin said was the truth? Absolutely not. But they made it very clear that virtually everything that we were being told, in which we felt deep down in our souls, also was not true, was, yeah, a lot of lies as well. Hearing both sides and then determining what is true or what is false is the right of every citizen. And number three, despite the fact that I very much dislike it for a lot of reasons, is because I think that we would be living in a different and perhaps a better America today if we had social media and we had citizen journalists back when 9-11 happened. That's the truth. I really do. I look around and I say, what do we have to show for it? All of these nonstop wars since 9-11, what do we have to show for it? America is trillions of dollars in debt. America is definitively a less safe country today than it was before 9 11. Despite the pitch, oh, we gotta do this for your safety. No, <laughs> country's not safe. This country's not secure. Our border is wide open. So, yeah, we were no doubt freer and we were no doubt safer before the military industrial complex began controlling every aspect of our lives. At the end of the day, you guys know where I stand. More speech, not less. Leave TikTok alone. So you see what it is, man. So you get a point, you get what it's really about, right? It's not about it's the the real thing is these platforms, especially TikTok, TikTok has a large percentage of its the youth of the world, especially in America, that go to it to search for news, food, all types of things. And if you notice, they're really focused on the future and the kids. And if they can't control 
the information that goes to the kids, they feel like they lose control of the future. And we know that because that's why they want to teach your kids everything you probably wouldn't teach them. And they want to do it to them in public schools when they're three years old. They want to have, you know, the cross dresser you know, reading storybooks to them in the library, in a locked library. You know what I'm saying? This is real life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this is a big new Brzezinski. He was the national security advisor to Jimmy Carter, and he is the one that put together the idea to fund who later became Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, Osama bin Laden, and the Mujahideen. This is a group of Afghanistan fighters or people from Afghanistan that were armed and trained and funded to fight against the Soviet Union, Russia. That's how they came to power in Afghanistan which is like how all of the terrorists come to power, comes from us funding and supplying them. But he says, shortly the public will be unable to reason or think for themselves. They'll only be able to parrot the information they've been given on the previous night's news. Now, why would a national security advisor like that? Because that means they can sell any war they want to, or they can get you believing in things that make you scared and make you give up your rights so you can get groped in the, you know what I'm saying, groped in the airport, you know what I'm saying, ain't nobody, since when, like really, they're letting people cross, or not even cross, they're trafficking people into these airports, and shipping them all across the country, with federal money, and they're not having to go through TSA, and have documents, and all that, you know what I'm saying, so you gotta wake up, this is the future that we're talking about, all right, it's J Midnight, all right, so next I want to talk about my guys, Earn Your Leisure and Ian Dunlap, the master investor. Now, they had a real interesting little segment right here. And I was, like, interested because I'm wondering maybe if they're not really getting the pulse of what Candace Owens is doing. Like, maybe they think she's just pretending to be... Um, Maybe they think she's just using, like it sounded like they were saying she's using black media, black media to boost her brand and potentially become a political candidate. Now, I don't know if she's going to become a polit political candidate or if that's her goal or whatever, but I kind of understand what they're thinking because I used to feel like that about Candace Owens because I used to see this like years ago, maybe five, six years ago. Um, no, now, no, more like eight, nine years ago, they, Fox News would always have her on, but they would only have her on to basically defend, like, <laughs> cops killing people, so that was kind of like my first seeing her was on Fox News, and every time it was like she was there to say what Bill O'Reilly and them wanted her to say, so I, I didn't, I didn't, I could say I didn't really fuck with her in the beginning. But over time, I gave her some more opportunity. I've watched her some more. But it seems like once um, she was able to go independent, I got to hear more of her thoughts rather than political people asking her a question to get the answer that they wanted and then use that. And I think that part of her period of growth is what a lot of Black people see her as. And a lot of black people haven't given her time or haven't given her a real in-depth look to really see that although she has some opinions that we might not agree with, and I'm not speaking for all black people, but I'm speaking for how I was thinking at the time that we might not agree with some of those opinions. Now that we're more advanced in time, we can see that media uses certain events like a cop kneeling on a person's neck to generate this anger in people. And in those situations, hell yeah, the cop needs to get the justice they deserve. And But we can't also look at every situation the same and automatically assume it's police brutality. But don't get it twisted. They got the guns. So they have to be the ones to show restraint. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got to be the ones to show restraint most of these times. 
and show some intelligence because a lot of these deaths don't have to happen. It's really their own fear, but that's a whole nother combo. Let's look at what um, Ian, and D Ian Dunlap and Earn Your Leisure had to say, Rashad and Troy. So they're talking about what are her prospects? How do you see how she's growing? And I think Ian really got a good, he could really see how her brand is growing. I, I, I want y'all to see this. Like right now, can you name me four Democrats that have a chance of winning in a landslide in the next four years in any state? What, the, the national election? No. But not, or, not I or can't, local. I can't, I no. can't name four Republicans either. Both both things are true. I can't name one Republican outside Donald Trump. I can name one. Who? Candace Owens. She has. I see her. I see her, I, I see her play. She's doing the same bullshit Patrick Bet she's David using doing. The culture, she's using the culture as a springboard. I see Joe Biden interviewed her. I saw a fresh and fit with her. Um, she's using the culture as she's a springboard. She's heating up, yo. But she has no chance. She has no chance. No chance. You don't think you don't think she can at least be city council? Oh, Jason Lee's gonna be city council. Shout out to Jason Lee. Shout out to Jason Lee. But I mean, who, who, who's, who's, who's our base? Who, who's our base? Like in your opinion, who's our base? MAGA boys. Kanye. She's a black woman. Let's not forget she's a black woman. Yeah. Right. So who's our base? Who's really our base? Let's not forget that part of it. I mean, she can't her run from that. You know what I'm saying? She can't run it's from all that. good today. Really got to vote for you. She can't run from that. That's like saying Charleston White is going to be a Republican candidate. <laughs> I'm not. I'm saying I'm not saying for national, but Charleston may win some in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, hey, yeah, I pulled back. I, 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 if if you build an audience up that loves you, which you guys have done, earned your leisure. I've done with Red Panda cult following. I see what Candace Owens is doing. I see what Patrick Bet David is doing. I see the delay in the what The Rock is doing. I see what Mr. Beast is doing. If you build up the audience, the shellacking is really easy if you don't have no great candidates. Well, I would have. I would probably say that The Rock and Mr. Beast would be Democratic candidates. I would. I would. Guess. Mr. Beast Democratic for sure. They may swing The Rock the other way. Uh, I don't know. Republican? The Rock? I don't know. I don't know. You smell what The Rock is cooking? For real. So, my response to the master investor, Ian Dunlap, he's definitely, you know, he's definitely on point. He can see the growth. He's real astute when it comes to the branding that she's doing and her growth as a business. You know what I'm saying? But um, I would like to know more about why he would say, like, as if she's exploiting black media to do this like as if she's not like I, I'm not even gonna speak for him I just want to hear his opinion like in depth about that but um when it comes to Candace Owens she's growing a lot but people are forgetting when we got into I gotta be careful with these words because people get triggered and the algorithms get triggered but um she's got a large following of people who were astute enough and aware enough and not scared when they locked down everything and were telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that. She was one of the people that put her neck on the line to give information, meaning studies about this uh, virus. Um, doctors talked to a lot of people, was given information that we needed. And the mainstream media wasn't giving you no information. They were giving you Dr. Fauci telling you to be scared for your life and telling you two masks is good, three masks is good, however many you need to wear. And he was telling you that after he originally said masking doesn't block the virus. Now, I know most people don't really um, actually look at medical journals or studies, but the size of this particulate was it was nano sized, meaning the cloth on your face isn't going to do nothing. The only thing that can have a chance of blocking this is N95 and higher. So when they're telling you, you got to walk in the store in a one way aisle, I mean, come on, this is not about a virus. When they tell you, you can 
go out, but everything closes at 10 p.m. because of the virus, you got to ask yourself, do viruses come, do viruses wait for you to break your curfew and then come out all of a sudden? Or when you walk into a restaurant with a mask on, then sit down, take your mask off, then eat with your friends, and then put your mask back on to go to the bathroom, and then come back to the table and then take your mask off. See, it don't make sense. So there were people like Candace Owens that built a large following because of this, because there's people that know the truth and when they find people who they know know the truth, it's an unstoppable force. The truth is unstoppable. So you might be underestimating Candace on these ones, on this one, my guys. But I just wanted to shout out to them because that was a real good topic. Like, I want to see what people think about that. Shout out to Ian Dunlap and Rashad and Troy. Well, someone who might have a more realistic chance in the political world is Aaron Rodgers. So he is a high prospect being considered for the vice president position with Robert Kennedy Jr. So check it, y'all. This ties into the last topic perfectly. Cam and Mace from It Is What It Is. I want you to pay attention to what Cam says about Aaron Rodgers running for vice president, allegedly. And he has a good pulse of exactly kind of what Ian was talking about in the last segment about branding. Check this out. Do you guys actually see this happening? Because he is on the, he's supposed to be on the ballot for this year. What's going on? Are they serious about this? Yeah, he's very serious. So Aaron Rodgers, so he's coming back to the Jets now or no? That's what Jet fans probably scared yeah, of. Like, don't do yeah, that like, shit yeah, right bro, now. Come dude. on, man. We, <laughs> Jet fans probably don't like... Don't do this in New York. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you that now, Aaron Rodgers. I know you got plans to, to be the VP and all that, bro. Listen. This don't, the, don't, don't do that. Yeah, they, this they, tw- <laughs> 2028 ain't going nowhere. That's when they start talking <laughs> yeah. about 2028 ain't going nowhere. Don't yeah. do this when you get to New York. You just got hurt the first, the first game. And now this, this, oh, New York will never recover. Yeah, they'll be upset. They'll Plus, never recover. He won't get no votes out of New York. Not out of New York. They'll be pissed. Yeah. And that's going to spew over to Jersey and it's a few really other Jersey places. Jersey more than anywhere. Jersey. Yeah. No, Jersey they, ain't voting. <laughs> they will not vote. You already lost two, two um, states off that. Yeah, they not voting at all. Jersey take that, you know, because their stadium, for those that don't know, uh, the Giants and Jets play in New Jersey, actually. I know it's called the New York Giants, but they actually play in New Jersey, and the Jersey fans take that shit seriously. Yeah, they definitely are never going to forget it. And anywhere they got family, they're going to tell them. Right. As far as Aaron Rodgers running for vice president with Kennedy, look, you know, Aaron Rodgers, I ain't saying he Trump or nothing like that or close to it, but he be having his own little shit going on, too, like little conspiracy theories, smoke weed like hemp, uh, he lied about getting the vaccine so he could play. Then he admitted that he lied about not getting the vaccine. Like I, they said, man, where's your paperwork for the vaccine? All right, I lied. So what? Whatever. I ain't want to put that shit in my system. Aaron Rodgers got like a little bit of rebel pause in him to go against the grain. And America likes that. Yeah. America likes to go against the grain ass nigga. <laughs> And he yeah, has, they showed up for Trump over that. Right, and and listen, that may be why a nigga trying to pull Aaron Rodgers in with him. Like, yo, we need somebody who don't give a fuck like this. Yeah. Because Aaron Rodgers, a lot of shit, he don't give a fuck. Even when he does, talks about sports on Pat McAfee show, they get political about a lot of shit. And even me, I'll be like, damn, Aaron, you sure you want to say that shit? You yeah. positive? And he don't give a fuck. Sometimes people like it because it, it shows that you're an independent thinker and you're not being coached to say what you're saying. Right. So. Doesn't mean it's always right, though. I never said that. I just think that he's more realistic than Steph Curry if it happens. Yeah. But as far as you, you're 100% correct. Don't do this on the Jets watch, man. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that to the Jets. I'm not even a Jets fan, but don't do that to them niggas. Them niggas are trying to hope you came back for the playoffs. This will cancel everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? People people are ready for 
people to, that stand up and that bout what they say they bout. You know what I mean? Like, we could tell when you saying what's politically correct and when you're maneuvering. You know what I mean? Like, people want the truth. And that's the era we in. And 2024 is the year of the truth. Shout out to Stat, baby. That's what she said, too. You know what I mean? So if you're trying to cut through, you don't got to try. All you got to do is be true to you and rely your boo. <laughs> I feel stupid. But, yo, that's it for today. You feel me? Shout out to It Is What It Is. Shout out to Candace Owens. Shout out to Patrick Bet David. Shout out to Earn Your Leisure. All great content creators, great talkers, great producers. And all we doing is bringing the game to y'all so that we can all have a voice and we can respect it. You feel me? Because we ain't got... I hope you ain't still watching TV. You still watching CNN? You still watching Fox? <laughs> it's over with. Turn off ESPN. Turn, tune into the real one. You know what I'm saying? Midnight Hustle. Peace out.